Hi everyone, it's the Tides Changing here, and welcome to another speed build. Today I'm going to be making a 70s theme starter for my Generations Let's Play that I have named that 70s starter, so I'm once again keeping with the That 70s Show reference. And some of you may be wondering why I'm making a 70s themed house for my Generations Let's Play, you know, especially if you haven't seen the series at all before. So I'm just going to give a quick explanation of the Let's Play. For those of you who haven't seen it before, since it is a bit different than most generations, Let's Play. Uh, so pretty much the Let's Play started off with a 50s couple named Lucille and Stanley. And every 10 or so parts, it moves on to a different generation. So currently the Let's Play is in the 70s and Lucille and Stanley's oldest child, Thomas, is about to get married. And once he gets married, he's going to need a new house to live in with his wife. So I'm just making this really small starter priced home for them to move into since, you know, I don't want to use any money cheats and I'm going to buy with what the family has saved up. And this house actually is a legitimate starter. It comes in just under 16,500 simoleons. Uh, that's, it came to about 16,400 something, you know, in the neighborhood, but then when I put it into the bin, it was a little bit less. So depending on the values of the lots in the neighborhood you put this house in, it might end up being a bit less than that. But um, no matter where you put it, unless it's, you know, really expensive 30 by 20 lot, it should fall under the starter price. And this is actually the first starter house that I made in a long while. I think I made one a couple years ago before start, even starting YouTube. So yeah, I just, um, I usually have such trouble trying to make starter homes because I tend to make homes very expensive because I, I'm usually very detailed with the furnishing. So it was a bit of a challenge to make a home that actually is starter price. So it is a bit less detailed than the homes I normally made make. And the fact that it is 70s theme also added another layer of difficulty to it since you know, I had to go with 70s themed furnishings, and some of the 70s themed furnishings aren't the cheapest that you can get. But surprisingly, it did end up under, you know, end up under starter price. And it's actually fairly large for a starter home. As you can see, looking in here, it does have two bedrooms. One of them I furnished, and that's the master bedroom. And then there is another unfurnished one, you know, that makes it, this house good for expanding on in the future. And I had to leave it unfurnished in order to keep it under the price, but, you know, like I said, it is there and will be good in the future if you move a family in and, you know, they have a kid or something, you know, it should be pretty easy to be able to afford a crib on top of this house after, you know, a little bit of gameplay. Um, I'm not sure how many of you want to use a 70s themed starter home, but, you know, I figured it'd be fun to put it up for download just in case anyone wants a funky home to start your Sims out with. But right here, I'm moving on to the living room of the house. And I actually had a little bit of trouble trying to pick out the furniture for it. I did use that 70s theme couch that came with the 70s, 80s, and 90s stuff pack, but then I had some trouble trying to pick out another chair. I did originally put in this chair here that came with Showtime, I believe. The Showtime did have some funky furniture that worked with the theme, um, but I was trying to make it a different pattern than what was on the couch just so, you know, it didn't perfectly match, but I just had some trouble getting that one to look right. So I tried a couple different chairs. Um, I won't try it out the, uh, pillow cushion that came with the Bohemian Garden set, but that looked kind of odd. And then I tried out this old fashioned chair from Generations and then I ended up going with this rather cheap base game chair because, you know, I did have to keep things fairly cheap. So I spent a bit of time trying to pick out the, the patterns on that furnishing there and it was a little bit difficult to try and get something that was different but then match fairly well. And I changed the carpet from green to brown since I figured that would make it easier to match things in there. I will say though that this house did turn out a little bit odd looking in some ways though because you know the 70s wasn't exactly known for being the most fashionable decade. But I did keep with the theme very well which resulted in some very odd color choices and pattern choices. Uh, but like I said it did fit with the theme fairly well and this is the first video that I'm recording since getting back from vacation. I actually got back on Saturday. But I did want to have something different than a Let's Furnish or Let's Play for the first video after getting back since for the past three weeks or almost four weeks or so, I've pretty much just been uploading a Let's Furnish, then Break, then Let's Play, then Break, then Let's Furnish and so on, which I feel has been getting a little bit boring. So I just wanted to have something, you know, a little bit different this first video back. And, you know, I do want to have more variety over the next couple weeks since um, I just did the same thing because it was the easiest way to get videos up regularly and I had to do a lot of pre-recording to have videos up while I was gone on vacation. I was also still working full-time on my internship, so it was just kind of a lot to juggle. So that was the so the easiest way to do that was to just kind of, like I said, alternate between Let's Furnishes and Let's Plays every other day. 
But I will be uploading some different stuff over the next couple of weeks before I start the semester. So I have this video today. Tomorrow I'll probably do another Let's Play and I also will probably upload, I'll probably upload a couple parts of the Generations this week and I also was planning on doing something with the Sims 4 Create a Sim demo. I still have to figure out exactly what I'm going to do. And of course another Let's Furnish and I was also planning on having another Let's Renovate Sunset Valley video up this weekend since I haven't done one in a while and I know a lot of you have, you know, I've had several of you asking in the comments when the next one is going to be up so It'll be up this weekend and I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than, you know, a small home for it. So I hope you all will enjoy that. I also wanted to mention that I'll probably be uploading almost every day over the next couple of weeks. And that's because I made the last day of my internship the Friday before going on vacation since my vacation was so close to the end of the summer. I just felt like it'd be weird to go away for a week, then come back for a week or two, and then have to finish everything up, so I felt like it was just easiest to, you know, end the internship before going on vacation, and that also gives me just a couple weeks to relax and spend more time making videos and taking care of things before going to school, uh, which the semester starts on September 2nd, which also happens to be when The Sims 4 comes out, so that kind of sucks in a way that the game's gonna come out and then I'm just gonna get really busy with school since... This will be my last semester and I have a feeling it's going to be pretty intense because I have to take a capstone class that pretty much what we have to do is invent and prototype something all within three months. So, you know, we have to complete, come up with a new invention and prototype and like actually make something. So that's going to be a very, very time consuming class. And then on top of that, I also have three electives, which might also be time consuming. I don't know because electives are sometimes a little bit lighter, but then I chose my electives based off of what I wanted to do rather than what's the easiest elective. So I don't know, it could still be a really rough semester. So uh, I'm not exactly looking forward to that, but you know, I'm almost at the finishing line. So, you know, I just, just got to get it over with. Um, but yeah, I'm working on the kitchen here and I will say the reason why the stove is, the stove and fridge are really ugly green is that I guess it's called avocado green was a really common color for things in the 70s and then the counters are a yellow color that was common although I do go back and change the counters a bit but yeah the like I said for the 70s just was a decade with some very odd color choices <laughs> it definitely wasn't the best looking decade but you know it was it was an interesting and I also made the sink in here the same avocado green Getting off topic a bit though, the trip I had last week was really fun. I think I said it in a previous video, but I went to a lake house with some friends for a week and we had a bunch of fun. We went kayaking because the house we were at actually had some kayaks with it. So this is kind of sad, but it was actually my first time kayaking and I really enjoyed it. It's a pretty good upper body workout too. Uh, we also swam around in the lake a little bit since the house was right on the lake. And one day we went on a little hiking trip and we also just, you know, hung out, had campfires, and it's a lot of fun. And the past five or so summers, actually, I've been going on these trips with about the same group of friends, and it's something I always really, really look forward to. Like, it's always the highlight of my summer. Um, I guess since I don't really do like, family vacations anymore, because, you know, they're expensive, and it's a lot easier to afford a vacation when, you know, you just split the trip with some friends. Um, but something I always look forward to on these trips is the food. Which, um, you know, might seem a little bit odd considering, you know, you think a bunch of college-aged kids getting together would just be like ramen and cereal and food like that. But, uh, something we've always done is usually about ten of us go. So we, you know, we get split up into pairs and each of us, each of the pairs cooks a different meal each night to save money. So, you know, we're not going to restaurants and that way we get a really good meal and it's kind of a competition to make the best meal because no one wants to disappoint their friends and be the person who like gets a box of cereal and calls it breakfast for dinner or puts a bunch of Starburst in a bowl and says it's a fruit salad or something like, you know, something silly like that. Uh, although one year they, some friends did do, try to do like an interesting meal thing and they like popcorn salad where they just put popcorn in a salad with lettuce and there was something weird involving hot dogs too, but I can't remember exactly what it was. Uh, but yeah, the dinners were really good this year. Uh, first night we had sushi, um, which actually turned out really well. Some of my friends made sushi, and I guess it was the second time trying it, but it turned out really well. And then the second night we had some creamy spinach basil sauce over pasta with garlic bread. And then Wednesday it was actually my boyfriend and I's turn to make dinner, and we made some tilapia with a sauce made of jalapenos, ginger, cilantro, white wine, soy sauce, and canola oil, along with garlic, all like grounded up and then spread over the fish, which was actually really good. And we also made 
Parmesan roasted potatoes and a, I think it was like grape arugula with grape and avocado salad, but it was really good. And then the next night someone made, um, it was like peanut sauce with shrimp and chicken skewers and some vegetable stir fry. And then we had caprese wraps the last night, which was basically, it was, um, I think it was like ricotta cheese and spinach rolled up in lasagna noodles. Uh, but that was really good. Uh, I think I actually spent a few minutes rambling on about food, but, um, but yeah, there's some, yeah, there's always really good food on those trips, um, you know, which is nice, you know, a little bit different than what I normally, because I used to cook a lot, but, like, this summer I've just been lazy and just make quesadillas or, like, a tuna fish sandwich after work, um, so it was really nice just to have, you know, good cooking the whole time I was on the trip, um, I don't know, it's kind of bad that I rambled on about the food on the trip more so than the actual activities, um, uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna focus on the actual house for the rest of this video. Um, so as you may have noticed, I did close off the wall between the living room and the kitchen just because that half wall looked a little bit odd to me. I just, I just kept feeling like it looked weird and like it didn't really look very 70s if that makes sense. Like I felt like having it closed off would look a little bit better with the theme. And I also changed the walls in the living room from the paneling type wall that I had to just being a plain orange wall with a striped accent wall behind the TV. I thought that'd be look interesting and you know, the striped wall seemed very 70s ish and in the kitchen I used that same paneling that I originally had in the living room, you know, the yellow floral paneling along with, that's actually carpet in the bottom part of the panel. I know that's awful, but um, I guess carpet walls were kind of a thing. So I felt like I had to include carpet on the wall somewhere in this house. And then in the bathroom, I had some trouble with the bathroom because I was trying to make it look good, but then, you know, it fit the 70s theme, which doesn't always look good. Uh, so I was trying to find the perfect wallpaper because I didn't want to go with something like obscenely busy, but then I wanted something kind of busy. So I had a hard, I had a little bit of trouble trying to find that balance, and I played around with quite a few different patterns. And I actually played around with wall patterns in this house a lot more than I normally do, just because of trying to keep with that crazy '70s theme. So for the bathroom, everything is pretty much avocado green, apart from that striped wall in there. And there, I was just changing the carpet in the spare bedroom to be mauve, um, and. As you may have noticed, I did put some paneling walls up in there since, you know, paneling was a thing back in the 70s. And right now I am working on the master bedroom and I use this kind of funky-ish pattern on the bed. Um, it's definitely a louder pattern than I would typically put on beds. And once again, I had a lot of trouble with picking the wallpaper in this bedroom. Um, I originally just put the same paneling in, then I do play around with it a bit. And since this is a starter home, the furnishing is not nearly as detailed as I normally have it since, you know, that gets quite expensive. So the furnishing in the bedroom is a little bit sparse. I mean, right now all there is is the bed and end tables and a dresser. And I use that cheaper modern looking bed there since I felt like it went with the 70s theme more so than using the four post bed did, you know, like that just seems like something more old fashioned, like from the 50s. So I think 70s was kind of getting into like the modern funky type stuff and like I said, I had a lot of trouble picking out the wallpaper because I wanted something kind of busy, but then the pattern on the bed was also really busy, so I didn't want to have like two really busy patterns that just clash a lot. So I just tried for ages, just trying to find the perfect pattern. Um, and then, you know, having a plain colored wall, I felt was too plain, so I just kept going back and forth between stripe patterns and then those wavy stripes. And it was just, it was just really hard to try and pick out the wallpapers for this house, um, just because I just, I don't normally do really loud wallpaper so it's just really a little bit of a challenge for me to try and do that so i think in you know i was playing around like once again i went back to playing around with stripe patterns and then i believe i ended up deciding after playing around with a little bit more in the end i ended up going with a wood pattern wall which i think i do really really shortly um after putting up a mirror though because i felt like there needed to be something on that wall though and then here i changed it to a paneling just because you know paneling was pop popular in the 70s and I felt like that was finally the right balance between being busy and eccentric, but not too busy. So I think that worked out really well having that carpet, wall, carpet, paneling combos, just like the 70s, you know, just several things, several odd things from the 70s combined into one wall. And right here, I'm just doing some light landscaping. Uh, putting a bunch of plants in can get expensive, so I didn't really put a whole lot. I just have that small garden there with a few plants into the front there and then for the rest of it i just put in some flower terrain paint since terrain paints free you know just to make it look landscaped and here i'm moving on to the screenshots i really like how this little starter home turned out and i'm really looking forward to playing in it i'll probably be using it in the let's play later this week and i really do feel like this house is packed with a lot of stuff for a starter home 
And I hope that those of you who download this funky little star at home really enjoy playing in it. And that will be all for, for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and bye.